Good morning, beloved. Peace be with you. Today we want to reflect on our gospel passage. This is from John 3.16, something we should all have memorized or be very familiar with. And um, part of the reason is because it just reveals so much of God's character, God the Father's character uh, towards us. You know, how do you, how do you see God... Um, how do you think of God the Father? And how do you think that he thinks of us? I was recently in a conversation with someone and this person was <clears throat> supposedly well known for being very pious and did a lots of novenas and all these rosaries every day. And people thought of this person as very holy, pious and close to God. And one of the first things this person said to me was, Oh, God the Father just is trying to put, just trying to smack down the world for all of its sin. And, and thank, thankfully, we have Jesus and Mary just holding God's hand back from, from smacking all of us down. And I said, I said, that's what you think of our Father? That is such a terrible image of our Father. You think he just is trying to smack down, but oh, thankfully, Jesus and Mary are so merciful towards us that they're holding our Father's hand back from the smackdown. Yeah. Uh, don't you see all the sin in the world? I said, yeah, but that's not God's position towards us. Don't you know the scriptures? <laughs> and here's just one beautiful scripture that tells us exactly what God feels about us in the midst of all of our sin. <clears throat> in fact, Jesus came, we think it's bad now, Jesus came at the culmination of the world's worst sin. That's when Jesus came. Uh, what was God's position? God so loved the world despite all of its sinfulness. He, his position, I love you, and here's my son, my only begotten son whom I love. I'll give, I love you so much, I'll give you him. God the Father's not trying to smack us down and Jesus holding his hand back and, and Mary holding her hand back. God is trying to smack us with love, huh? I'm sure he wants to smack us sometimes. Don't you want to smack people sometimes? Even that is because you know they could, be, they, they could be better. You could be better than you are. And God wants what's best for us. So God sent us his son, Jesus. This is his position towards us. We want to also just try to eliminate any difference between Jesus and the Father. The only reason we know anything about the Father is because of Jesus. Jesus is the face of the Father. Remember, Jesus said... The works that I do are the works of my Father. The only reason he does them is because he sees his Father doing them. So whatever we see Jesus doing in action, it's, that's what the Father's doing. So if we say God the Father's ready to put the smack down, then Jesus must be too, because Jesus does the works of his Father. But if we say Jesus is merciful, and then the Father must also be merciful. Jesus himself also said, the words that I speak are not my words. It is the Father in me speaking his words through me. That means everything we hear and see Jesus saying in the scriptures, in the New Testament, is actually our Father speaking to us. So there, we can't have to get rid of this separation as if like the Father's ready to put the smack down, he's a mean old dad, and Jesus is just, oh Jesus the merciful. Like Jesus is the face, the image of God. And to make sure we have a, a right image of God and how he feels about us, we have to read the scriptures every day. I don't get, stop listening to certain priests. Stop listening to bishops. Stop listening and reading different saints. Read the scriptures. The sacred scriptures have more authority than any, any word in tradition, than any word in the saints, than any word from some preacher. The scriptures are first. This is the authority. The scriptures are, are, we say, this is the word of God. But Jesus is also called the word of God. He is the, he is the scriptures in the flesh. He's not the tradition in the flesh. He's not the writing of the saints in the flesh. He's the, he's the sacred scriptures in the flesh. And it's not enough just to sit in adoration with Jesus unless you're also reading the scriptures. <clears throat> That's the only way we get to know Jesus, by reading his word spoken to us. This is God's word already spoken to us. So we have to be familiar with it. Start in the New Testament. 
we're New Testament believers, start in the New Testament, read the New Testament. When it comes, and it, when it, if the New Testament quotes the Old Testament, then in your Bible, look at the quotation and where it tells you the verses, and then go read that part of the Old Testament. And just see how the New Testament brings in the Old Testament in context. And, and just start reading like that. When you have a question, write it down. Bring that to God in adoration. And then start to see how God opens up the scriptures to you. But we have to know the scriptures better than we know our own family life. We have to. This is our eternal life. This is it. Every day, read the scriptures. Otherwise, you might be pious. You might pray 12 rosaries a day. You might sit in adoration all day, and everybody around you might think you're holy, but you won't even know God. You'll look like you do, but you'll be walking around talking about how God wants to do a smackdown. <laughs> and rather, when in the scriptures are saying, God is trying to love you. God so loved the world, he sacrificed his only son. He didn't smack us down, he smacked his son down. That's a lot of love. So we want to have the right image of God so we can see the world as God sees the world. And just one last thing, you know, people always, it's always that little, oh, South California going to fall off into the ocean, you know, because they're going to hell in the handbasket with all their liberal progressive uh, politics and sins and everything. And we, I love how we had the speaker, speaker come in January when we were le- hosting part of a prophetic conference with other churches. And they came to, the speaker came to us first. And one of the first words he, says, he said was, God loves San Diego. God loves California. He does. You know, so if we're really in prayer in tune and in communion with God in prayer, we are going to see people and the world and ourselves the way that God sees us and the way that God sees them. And, and that's going to reflect in, our, in the words that we speak and the thoughts that we think and the actions that we do. We'll, we'll become more loving and, and, and we'll do more service. We will serve people like Jesus did. All right, that's enough for a daily mass, huh? So God loves the world, and God loves San Diego, and we need to, too. So let's stand and offer our Father who loves us some prayers this morning.